James had not been out to push coaches or freight cars in the yard for several days. He was feeling miserable. Oh dear, he thought, I wonder how long I shall have to stay in the shed. Will anyone see my red coat again? Why did I go so fast that I made a hole in one of my coaches that had to be mended with, of all things? At last, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. I know you are sorry, James, he said. And I know, too, that you want to be a useful engine. People are laughing at my railway, and I do not like that at all. I will try hard to do my best, said James. That's a good engine. There's nothing like determination. I want you to pull some freight cars for me. James was delighted and puffed away. Here is your freight train, James, said Thomas. Have you got some boot laces ready? And he ran off laughing. Oh, oh, said the freight cars. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. James took no notice and started as soon as the conductor was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. We won't, we won't, screamed the freight cars. But James didn't care, and he pulled the screeching cars sternly out of the station. cars tried hard to make him give up, but he still kept on. Sometimes their brakes would slip on, and sometimes their axles would run hot, and each time the trouble had to be put right. And each time James would start again, determined not to let them beat him. Give up, give up, you can't pull us, you can't, you can't call the cars. I can and I will, I can and I will, puffed James. And slowly but surely, he pulled them along the line. At last they saw Gordon's Hill. Look out for trouble, James, warned his driver. We'll go fast and get them up before they know it. Don't let them stop you. So James went faster and soon they were halfway up. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, he panted. Will the top never come? Then, with a sudden jerk, it all came easier. I've done it, I've done it, he puffed. Hooray, it's easy now. But his driver shut off steam. They've done it again. We've left our tail behind. Look, the last cars were running backwards down the hill. The coupling had snapped. But the conductor stopped the cars and got out to warn approaching engines. That's why it was easy, said James, as he backed the other cars carefully down. What silly things freight cars are. There might have been an accident. Shall I help you, James? called Edward. Uh, no, thank you, answered James. I'll pull them myself. Good. Don't let them beat you. You're doing well, whistled Edward, as James slowly struggled up the hill. I can do it, I can do it, he puffed. He pulled and puffed as hard as he could. I've done it, I've done it, he panted. They reached their station safely and James was resting in the yard when Edward pulled up. Peep, peep, he whistled. Then James saw Sir Topham Hatt. Oh dear, what will he say, he asked himself. But Sir Topham Hatt was smiling. I was in Edward's train and I saw everything, he said. You've made the most troublesome train on the line behave. After that, you deserve to keep your red coat. 